This is why you measure twice and cut once to avoid unnecessary contact with long black things. Uh, so uh, I did end up going to the supply store and uh, getting the proper mounting hardware uh, before uh, cutting the wires because uh, it would just not be feasible to do it uh, without actually having the uh, wall mains installed. And I do like how this has turned out. Uh, so I did choose to do a bit of a wonky thing and uh, take this at an angle up because we save quite a bit of wiring, probably 20, 30 centimeters uh, by just uh, having this at an angle rather than go there and then straight up and we can kind of cheese it and not have to mount it uh, any extra above. I'd have to probably have a vertical mount as well uh, if I were to run this straight because it would be such a long run uh, going up into a box. Uh, so we've got uh, crimped terminals there. Everything's pretty nicely in place, I do think. And you can see how we have three-dimensional wiring. I don't mind how this has turned out at all. Uh, so uh, I need to uh, finalize this now. A shrink wrap here, shrink wrap here, and uh, just make sure everything's nice and safe uh, and uh, concealed. And of course, I need to cut the eight layer. So this, this has cost me like 10 centimeters of 70 square mil wire. Uh, that's about a euro's worth of wire wasted just because I can't can't cut properly. Oh well. And there is a final mock-up, heat shrink and all. And we're really ready to tighten everything down now. Eh? So uh, prior to putting everything together, I really ultra cleaned everything with my little uh, isopropyl syringe and uh, made sure the mating surfaces are absolutely clean. I also put, put some effort into bending the wire so everything's uh, going completely straight down with no load going anywhere. So these are very sloppily in place, but they're staying where they are just fine. Uh, so there's no torques or anything anywhere. We do have quite a bit of a sway bar here since, you know, the wire doesn't start until here and this is the only uh, mounting point. So we could really swing quite a bit there if we it had torque going around there. Uh, that's going to be shrink wrap across and we have plastic lining there but if those swing so they go towards there you know you, you don't want to be too close to a metal case. So I'm gonna uh, torque down these guys uh, put the shrink wrap on and then torque down these guys. Now the manual specifies I believe seven newton meters for these which is it, that just feels really low. I tried that with my little torque wrench uh, when I did the test to run and I really am not comfortable using such a low torque setting. So I think I'm gonna go for 10, 12 Newton meters. And just, just about twice specified on these. Uh, I think the reason they specified it so low from the factory is that uh, we are getting into aluminium bus bars, very fat aluminium bus bars I might add. Uh, but uh, they have put steel inserts into them and I suspect the first revisions of this thing uh, just went straight into threaded aluminium which would get completely wrecked if you went much over 10 newton meters. Uh, so, wire is pretty much put down in place as it's uh, supposed to be. I just need to zip tight in place properly and uh, we have decent bend on everything going in and into the terminal block it goes and turns into 50 square mils going out into the batteries. That's looking reasonably well. So well, we did end up with, where is it? This little sausage left over from my faffing up the cutting but you know that's that's one of my fingers and my fingers are not large so that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. It's starting to look like something. Two days later and uh, things are finally starting to take proper shape. So, 
Uh, I did torque down the terminals as I promised and I put a proper amount of shrink wrap on that. Uh, it's all labelled and nice and ready to go and uh, this is going to work absolutely beautifully. Uh, the shrink wrap worked very well. I just uh, poked it in, I shrank a bit of the end and poked it in there so we actually have a shrink wrap going all the way inside the terminal and since it's such fat shrink wrap it's really freaking nice so this is going to be very good even if it gets like banged and it goes up against the side that's not going to fail easily and all the wiring is laid down with some extras all tied nicely in place and going where it's supposed to. Now, what's taken most of the time has not been uh, zip tying wires, he's been working on this thing and bringing it up to something resembling code. Because we now have uh, a fat wire going to the door, so it's not going to stay open anymore. But we have some rather more proper wiring for the Morningstar controller. And because I have decided to keep the Morningstar controller uh, connected to this cabinet. Uh, so uh, I have repurposed one of the front switches for a uh, low voltage solar isolation switch. And we just, we just have a couple of panels going to this thing, but they do produce. And so we have isolation switch there and some proper uh, breakers for everything there. So this is a uh, I believe 56 amp breaker uh, for the uh, input and output, uh, well, only output really, uh, for the Morningstar controller going uh, straight to the fat uh, output uh, bus bars, well, kind of terminal blocks, I guess, uh, from the two main breakers. Uh, and notice that it's going to B2 plus and B1 negative. And that is very, very intentional because doing it this way, we're bringing our negative all the way to the inverter and back through B2 negative for battery two. And we're bringing B1, pos uh, B, uh, B1 positive all the way through the uh, inverter and back here for B1. So we're getting the same amount of voltage drop from uh, uh, the uh, morning start to both battery banks. If we hook this up straight across B1, uh, B1 or B2, we would get more voltage across the battery that's got the controller across it. But doing it this way, we uh, lose a tiny amount of power, uh, but we get the battery balancing included. And we really do not want one of the two banks uh, sitting at a higher voltage than the other. That's bad. Uh, so again, uh, from that, we just go straight into the fat breaker and uh, out to the morning stop controller through some nice holes in the wall there. So we really have no external wiring at all, save for the stuff that's getting up to be the wireless AP VAR. So that's turned out beautiful. Uh, and uh, the solar, if I wear that word up, it comes in through this fat uh, white uh, six square mil wire, goes to a couple of terminal blocks in there, and then it goes to this flex cable and it just straight both poles uh, to the uh, fat switch on the front and then goes uh, uh, through the switch and out uh, to the uh, protection breaker. So this is a 20 amp breaker that's there in case uh, of some malfunction uh, in the morning star malfunction on the wiring that would cause uh, say there to be a short uh, on the other end of this and battery voltage to go uh, through there it would just uh, trip this breaker at 20 amps rather than having to flip this at 50. Uh, so this is a nice thing, even though it's not the main isolation switch, it is circuit protection to make sure our wiring absolutely does not go on fire. This is a rather long uh, length of cable as well. I'm not sure it would even be able to carry enough current to reliably trip this. So we have that quite important. And in the morning star, we actually have a bit of chaos going on uh, because uh, I just kind of threw the power supply for the wireless AP in here. This is quite temporary. 
uh, there's, once we have a big inverter up and running, there's obviously going to be two 30 volts available here, and I can run a normal AP and things. Uh, but for the time being, we're actually limited to 48 volt DC, so I have my modified wall wall there just to uh, powering everything. And I've also quite properly wired up the uh, temperature probe for the morning star. It's a little grey thing coming loosely there, going along with battery cable to the warmer of the two batteries. Uh, right in the middle there, you can see it's planted between the batteries. So the reason I want to probe the warmer battery is because the colder battery wants a higher charge voltage and I'd rather undervolt the battery than overvolt the battery because these gel cells are super sensitive uh, to getting overvolted. We really, really do not want that ever. So we're probing the warmer battery. Uh, this one's going to be warmer in part because it's more tightly packed, uh, being four levels deep. And uh, uh, this is an interior wall, that's an exterior wall. So this wall is usually uh, five to 10 C year round. Uh, whereas uh, this wall is probably 15, uh, probably up to 18 in the summer. So these batteries are probably, probably never going to be at exactly the same temperature. Hmm. Oh, and I did go and buy this lovely uh, cable, uh, whatever you'd call that channel type thing. It's really nice to work with. Don't regret buying that at all. And you can see how beautifully we managed to bring out the inverter wiring there through the side of it. And uh, it's just wired up very, very uh, thoroughly. Just tied down everywhere. And the wood was just tied down as well. It's, none of this is going anywhere. None of this is going anywhere. So, uh, let's uh, do the deed. I have checked the polarity a few times. That's morning star. Uh, main power, warning star panel breaker, and finally, morning star solar on. So, this should not be tough, it's late in the evening, so it's not gonna uh, have any solar to charge the batteries with, but at least it's up and running. Now, when I do, uh, when we get to the uh, big inverter solar system, uh, we're actually going to have to be super, super careful about labeling because we have an isolation switch here that doesn't go to it, it just goes to the morning star. So I'm going to have to put a big fat label here saying solar panel isolation switch on eight side of house just to absolutely make sure that no one thinks but this is the isolation switch for the big inverter and then go poke around and kill themselves. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Still need to wear off the indicator lights. Stuff like that. But yeah. I'm getting somewhere. Oh yeah, the white uh, morning start panel wiring is just kind of all over the place. Uh, I need to get some of the AC wiring uh, that's going to go on bad done before I know exactly how I can write this. So that's why it's just done up to the point where I know it's going to be. And then there's probably going to be some AC wiring going to and from the inverter there as well. So I don't want to tie this down and have to work around that since uh, this wire is really the least important thing of everything. I'd rather have my mains wiring done up properly. And there's going to be a fair bit of that. Hmm. Let's go down and have a look at the system. <gasps> What's that? Something's gone wrong. We we'll have a red light. Because we've got indicator lights now and a copper pipe to open this thing properly. So, a lot is going on here. <coughs> Stay open. So, we've got wiring and it's going to different places. 
So if a red LED that's lit up it is uh, actually one of the original uh, light fixtures uh, from uh, when this uh, uh, cabinet was originally installed. Uh, but I've taken all of the stuff inside out and rebuilt it for 48 volt operation. And this one I've built up to 150 volt operation. Uh, so we're using uh, these blocks on the battery breakers uh, to actually power the breaker tripped alarms because I actually have these uh, lovely, probably very expensive uh, optional terminals on the side. And uh, these have uh, just amazing, amazing functionality. Uh, so uh, the top three blocks are a micro switch uh, that uh, it changes mode when the breaker is tripped uh, in a fault condition uh, and the bottom three are uh, a switch for when it's just off for any reason at all. Uh, so uh, I've hooked up to the tripped uh, connector. So if we uh, go and turn this off, Okay. Um, yeah. The LED goes out. So we can actually have one battery turned off completely and we can have no load on it, no, no parasitic draw from the LED. Uh, and of course, when we turn it on again, it does not light because the brake is not tripped. Uh, so, uh, another thing that's going on with this is I'm obviously not using a 50 square mil wiring to go all the way to the LED in the front and this is hooked up to a 160 amp breaker uh, and that would of course not be okay because if something were to short out uh, this uh, signal wire uh, would very much go on fire. Uh, so I have taken care of that with some resistors. Uh, in this shrink wrap, you can see we have wires going to, going in and out of focus, wires going uh, into the negative and positive terminals of a breaker, and uh, there are uh, 12K resistors under this shrink wrap. So the only piece of wiring that's uh, not fused is this, and on the other side of shrink wrap, uh, you can't get more than a milliamp out. So as long as we don't get it to short right here or right here, uh, this is very safe. And it's uh, on both the positive and the negative sides. Uh, so that's really, no matter how you short the gray wire or what you short it to, there's never gonna be more than a milliamp uh, going uh, through there. And obviously the same thing is true for, for the other breaker as well, uh, 12K resistors. Uh, which allow one milliamp to go to each of the LEDs. Uh, now, uh, the 150 volt uh, thing here, the Morningstar solar panel voltage present LED, uh, is uh, very simply wired up. Uh, I've customized the inside with a bunch of resistors to make it handle the high voltage, and that just goes zoop, straight into the secondary side of the Morningstar solar isolation switch. Uh, so if uh, the sun is up and this switch is on, uh, this LED will light. It lights at about 50 volts uh, and uh, it's uh, not gonna, gonna go on fire at uh, a bit over 150. Uh, so this is useful if uh, stupid springy wire. Uh, this is uh, useful uh, to just uh, give you a visual clue. If you want to work of a morning style, you want to do anything. If you do this, the LED goes off for you, letting you know that the morning star is safe to work with, that uh, you can turn the breaker off and uh, it's not going to be angry with you. So my, I just added that because I didn't have anything else to use that LED for really. Beautiful. The wiring is also, of course, loomed nice and tight with a zip ties and it's uh, just tied down to a big fat flex here. 
purposefully not tied here so it can slip and slide around and uh, it goes into this little uh, glued on channels which just hold them in place and I also run the temperature sensor wiring through that and uh, coincidentally this wiring for the LEDs is just leftover temperature sensor wi wiring from when I cut the very long temp sensor lead off. So there you go, bit of indication. I'm very happy with that. It's just so uh, satisfying. God damn it. Uh, to do that. Uh, uh. God damn it. This is difficult. Ugh. Yoga lessons.